they just recovered my whole childhood dignity like childhood brie is sitting back like i'm calling everybody pretty girl everywhere i see pretty girls pretty girl all across the world It's Brie Hall aka Lahar here and I'm back with another video and today's video is sponsored by Dyson Supersonic Hair Dryer. Today's video's title is 7 Mistakes, Horrible Mistakes at that, that you might be making while blow drying slash diffusing your hair, especially naturally curly hair because there's a lot that goes into the dynamics of natural hair. Around 1915, hair dryers began to go on the market in handheld form. Since the 1920s, the development of the hair dryer has focused on improving the wattage, weight, exterior, and of course overall dry time. Hooded dryers came on the scene around 1950 and the bonnet dryer was introduced to consumers around 1951. Growing up, I can remember long long grueling hours under the dryer for my roller sets and getting blowouts in high school via the blow dryer. Hair drying has a rich history and continues to evolve within our culture. Now with natural hair, heat of any kind, I mean any kind, is a very, very tough decision to make because it can literally be make or break for your curls. I feel like sometimes we focus so hard on the styling process that we forget that the drying process is about 50% of our results. During my taping of Make It Up With Awesomeness TV, I actually took a little detour from filming and I went to the Google headquarters to meet with some of the top engineers, stylists, and creators behind the blow dryer technology that I use and I learned some tips from experts and usually you have to pay for that kind of stuff but I'm gonna share it with you here for free, okay? I'm shook by what I learned. Mistake number one that you may be making while diffusing your curly hair is actually not investing in a quality blow dryer. So I've personally been using the Dyson Supersonic since 2017. So this actually is a product that I purchased with my own money, okay? I saw the price initially and just like the rest of everybody in the world, I was shook. I was like, that's a lot, that, that is a lot. But here is why I actually think it's worth the price. Many dryers on the market today use the same motor technology that's been in use since the 1960s, and let's say it's a little out of date. The Dyson Supersonic motor is in the handle instead of the head, and significantly smaller and much more powerful, making the dryer a lot less top heavy and more balanced. Also, the dryer just in general weighs less. The chance of heat damage is significantly reduced because of the microprocessor that monitors temperatures 20 times per second to avoid damaging temperatures and overheating. The dryer is faster with an average dry time for my thick hair being around 16 minutes so I'm using less heat in general. The dryer is significantly quieter which was one big selling point for me and here's an example of a drugstore dryer sound on the left versus the Dyson on the right. Also better quality dryers simply last longer. In testing Dyson dropped the dryers over 1700 times, twisted the cable over 300,000 times, pushed the buttons 52,000 times, and had people weighing 242 pounds stand on the dryers, dropped them down flights of steps over 100 times, and had them vigorously shaken and twisted to ensure that the dryer would still perform after all of that. All in all, products underwent $71 million of testing and four years of development using 103 engineers and 600 prototypes. Essentially, you get what you pay for. The best things about the technology that had me cracking up y'all are probably gonna be shook because if you followed me on twitter for a long time you know that my name on twitter right now is the breaker of combs and that's because through my whole childhood i've had a really traumatic experience around having natural hair as a child um so much so that i ended up getting a relaxer for half a decade of my childhood teenhood and literally that's because I used to have teeth sucked at me, I used to break combs, especially blow dryer attachments. Like the one we had at our house, I used to have like three or four missing teeth because my hair was so thick and it was literally seen as like the enemy to blow dryers. The Dyson team informed me something. <laughs> I'm still shook y'all, I had to call my mom after hearing this. So because a lot of these blow dryers are made with cheap plastic, Think about what happens when you put cheap plastic near heat. It melts, y'all. It literally melts down. So when you have this hot overheating dryer that's not measuring the temperature that well, and then you have this cheap plastic comb attachment or what have you, literally, 
the dryer combs were melting. Even though my hair is thick, they said, Brie, actually not your fault that the combs were breaking it was the material the combs were made of they just recovered my whole childhood dignity like childhood brie is sitting back like i'm calling everybody that that made it seem like my hair was unmanageable i'm calling everybody dyson's new wide tooth comb attachment is engineered for curly and textured hair the new comb attachment has robust teeth to help lengthen hair as it dries or create volume and shape I personally use this attachment for my more stretched hairstyles, such as prepping my hair for a braid out or a twist out on blow dried hair, or just to give my roots a little extra stretch when my hair is in its curly state. But yeah, so that's even more the reason why investing in quality technology is good. Now I advise everybody do your own research based on what's best for you economically, but I think that made a huge difference. Second tip, which I see a lot of people do, and I've been guilty of in the past, is blow drying your hair as soon as you take it out of the t-shirt or whatever you have your hair wrapped in and just going straight forward. I know how it is to be in a rush and you wanna do it, but it's not really conducive for the best results with your hair. Because blow drying immediately means that you're probably going to have also double the drying time. So what I like to do is if you're in a rush, because you're like Brie, but sometimes we're in a rush and I have to do that. Actually, I would say use a microfiber towel and gently fold the towel in half and just press it into your hair like this to get the excess water out while the product is actually in your hair and get the excess moisture out because you basically just don't want to blow dry soaking wet hair it's an unnecessary added time length it can add frizz because you're putting heat on your hair longer it's just not a good idea so my advice is to allow your hair to air dry drying so whether that's just air drying it out in the open whether that's putting it in a t-shirt for a little bit or whether that's the in a rush method and using the microfiber cloth to just soak up some of that extra moisture I highly advise doing that before you start going in with the blow dryer so my next tip is you're not using a quality diffuser the meeting blew my mind with this one too y'all a lot of diffusers on the market aren't real diffusers y'all I'm sorry to break it to you and I was one of those people for years I used to try so hard to like diffusers and I'm like I don't see the hype I don't see why people like them I really thought diffusers were reserved for girls with looser textures that's really what I honestly believed until about two years ago when I started faithfully using a diffuser and that is because of Dyson but I didn't know why I liked their diffuser a lot more than others I tried but here's why a lot of the diffusers on the market today and I'm sure y'all know what I'm talking about are just a hole with cups in it I'm not <laughs> are just cups with a bunch of like little holes in it. And it might be like 15, maybe 20 holes in the cup, pause. That's not diffusing. Now the definition of diffuse means to spread evenly and not direct or concentrated. So when you have like 15 little holes like this and air is just blowing and shooting, air is just blowing and shooting through them literally that is not diffusion because it's still direct air just patchy direct air that means that your hair is probably going to take longer to dry because imagine just think of it at the microscopic level you have one big like hole where air is coming out and then you have a section where nothing's coming out and then you have another place where air is coming out it's like a checker pattern to drying if that makes sense so that can cause uneven results it can cause overheating to the curls because some curls are getting a lot of air and some curls aren't getting any at all so you might find yourself going back over the same exact section multiple times in a row that's not healthy for the hair at all so with Dyson's diffuser what I actually noticed when I looked inside wait let me grab it I tried to clean it hopefully there's not too much hair product left on here so as you can see Dyson's diffuser for one has way more than 20 to 15 little holes it's actually a bunch of them underneath there's actually this plate that has thousands of little tiny microscopic diffusion holes. You can probably see it a little bit better through here. Yeah, you're literally getting even airflow through the whole diffuser. So I think that's really amazing. And that way you're actually, the part of your hair that you're drying, you don't have to worry about patches being dry and patches not being dry. Also what's cool is these little combs have air that shoots out of these as well. And since they're coming through the diffusion plate, they're also diffused, which is amazing. The last thing I'll say about the standard diffusers is because the technology is not really designed to spread the air out, you're literally just getting air coming mainly through the center. So it's not much better than actually 
actually just using your blow dryer by itself to be honest it might decrease a little bit of frizz but you'll still have a lot more frizz than if you're using a really really high quality diffuser it is over manipulation using your hands too much so when I diffuse I may use my hand as a guide but I am not see I could do this now because my hair is dry but I'm not flipping and doing all that you know like and shaking I'm not doing any of that while my hair is damp or in the drying process because that just causes unnecessary frizz and then also the Dyson team informed me that there is a such kind of damage I already know about like UV and heat damage and color damage all that stuff like chemical processing damage but they informed me about mechanical damage and mechanical damage is basically damage caused anytime you manipulate your hair so it might be gradual that's why people like finger detangling and stuff because that's why a lot of people swear by low manipulation of the hair and you know each strand has only so much it can take before it starts to weaken from being tugged and pulled and all that good stuff but any touch of the hair to an absolute minimum too much heat but also too much fan or air speed so a lot of people are using excessive heat to dry their hair quicker but there's a downside to drying your hair quicker because you're literally doing just that it's a self-fulfilling prophecy when you dry your hair quicker your hair also tends to dry out quicker it's literally sucking the moisture out of your hair when you use those extremely high heat settings and that's another reason I like putting my hand behind the section that I'm drying because once my hand starts to feel hot that's when I move on to my next section all right this next one I feel like some of y'all gonna feel personally victimized by this one but because I'm I'm guilty of this one too y'all blow drying or diffusing your hair at the wrong angle for your hair type ladies with my looser textures my fine hair ladies um, for y'all going up with the blow dryer and scrunching up like this and doing that kind of scrunch to the head method works wonderful you know what I mean you're gonna get lots of body and volume but if you have a tight curly hair texture like me don't do not put that that diffuser up in your hair like this it's gonna cause number one matting again manipulation of the curl if you have a tight texture or you're frizz prone again you don't want to manipulate your curls you you want to treat your curls like an infant baby like you just want to handle them delicately during the drying process cuz girl it makes a difference my wash and go some people in person will think my wash and go is a twist out just because I'm gentle with the manipulation while drying my hair I will gently kind of move my hair out the way and I will diffuse flat onto my hair so this doesn't manipulate the curls and since I already have thick 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 hair <laughs> I don't have a, a struggle with volume at all you know what I mean I can use an afro pick the comb attachment on my dryer whatever I need a regular comb at my roots and get volume once your hair is completely dry that's when you can manipulate and and stretch your hair or do whatever you want to do with your dryer on cool shot with some cold air can change your life what that does is it sets the style it closes the cuticle it's like locking your door after you leave your house okay you don't want to let nobody break in and mess up all your hard work so set your cuticle all right so that cold air locks the cuticle down it says all right you're not putting any more product on me you're not putting any more styling tools on me right now we can clock out today okay you want to let your cuticle clock out because if it's overworked it's gonna be frizzy okay y'all know me and my metaphors and my analogies and all that but <laughs> you get the gist you want to use cold air at the very end because that's literally gonna lock the style in and it also gives me a lot of shine in person special thank you to Dyson for sponsoring this video so let me know if you guys really love this video about my seven tips or basically mistakes you could be making while diffusing your natural hair if you're in the type 4 category, have you ever used a diffuser? Have you had difficulties? And is it due to the quality of the diffuser? Let your girl know all that stuff in the comments below. Love you guys so much. Thank you again to Dyson and the team for bringing me in. Again, I've used the dryer since 2017 and they were kind enough to gift me the comb attachment so now I can actually add that onto my dryer and the kit. But um, all my views on this are completely authentic because I really did invest. Love y'all. Peace out, gang gang. And I'll see you in my next video. Make sure to stream Unlawful. My single and video are out for that. All written by me. I need a little bit of trust from you. Oh, we can let the guns blow.